Hello and welcome to tonight's live. I have some big, big stories that I'm going to be going through with you. So stick with me to the very end. It's very late, but my children are now in bed and I am dedicated to bringing you guys the news and the truth as often as I can. I've been researching in between family events and have some absolutely incredible information to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this late night broadcast with this information. Aloha from Honolulu. Hi, Floria, Jose, Michael, Daniel. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, by the way, thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. I'm going to be going through how District Attorney Fonnie Willis has basically given the middle finger to House Representative Jim Jordan. She's also basically told Donald Trump to go to hell and that nothing, nothing on earth is going to stop her from jailing Trump for the rest of his life. And so we'll be getting deep into the weeds on this story. Again, hello, everybody. Good, good morning. If you're just catching me at this late or early morning broadcast. OK, The Hill has just reported that third party candidates might be the death of Joe Biden's 2024 campaign. Oh, from their lips to God's ears. Right now, as evidence, the report cited a Quinnipiac University poll which showcased Biden somehow leading Donald Trump by four points. However, when third party candidates such as Jill Stein, uh, RFK Jr., Cornell West were factored in, Donald Trump absolutely stomps Joe Biden in the presidential election. Now, let's hope that these people are able to stay the course and remain on their ballot and take votes away from Joe Biden. With that being said, a senior aide revealed to the New York Times that President Barack Obama is actively involved in advising Joe Biden and his team, driven by concerns over Donald Trump's potential uh, political comeback. So rumor has it that Joe Biden is like having a mental breakdown, guys crying like a baby. How could Trump, how could Trump be beating me? How could Donald Trump, he, he's got all of these indictments against him. Yeah, indictments that you ordered and you've already forgotten that you are going after your political opponent like you're in <laughs> Venezuela or you're Vladimir Putin or something crazy. But uh, while Obama is not expected to campaign directly for Biden, he reportedly intends to help bolster Biden's fundraising efforts and support among key voter demographics. The fact is that this will be another very close election and Obama knows it. Obama wants to remain in control and have his fourth term. And so he needs meet puppet Joe Biden to remain in office. And so he's doing everything he can. He knows that at the end of the day, uh, typically whoever spends the most money or gets the most media coverage or has billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg throw in $400 million, they end up winning the election. And so that's what they are trying to do right now. Now, Obama and Billy Clinton old Billy Clinton, planned to team up for a night of music to raise money for Joe Biden in the state of New York. Get this. This is such a slap in the face. It's $100,000 a plate to attend as Democrats literally tell New Yorkers to pound sand, choke on your bills, and suck it up while we give $1,400 a month in gift, gift cards to illegal immigrants. These elites literally hate their voter base and their voter base hasn't caught on to the fact that they hate their guts. It's crazy. They literally hate the voters in New York and yet they just, they continue to vote for them. So I guess, I guess you get what you vote for. 
Now, listen to this. This is hypocrisy. This is absolute insanity. I, I am so grateful for the New York Post. Huge Trump critic and Trump hater, late night host John Stewart is being blasted, absolutely blasted by viewers after he roasted Donald Trump for seemingly committing the same financial offense that Donald Trump committed. On Monday, Jon Stewart said Donald Trump lied about his property values in New York, which cost the city money. It did not cost the city a dime. But this is what this is what Jon Stewart told his people. Now, unfortunately for Jon Stewart, the New York Post released documents and evidence which they claim shows that Jon Stewart overvalued his own home by 829%. And ironically, his house is in the state of New York. Now, I'm sure Letitia James is going to immediately knock on his door and haul him off to jail, try to jail him for the rest of his life, take every last penny from Jon Stewart. No, they're not going to do that because of liberal privilege. But political commentator Tim Poole reacted to the news by stating, did Jon Stewart commit fraud when he sold his penthouse for $17.5 million? New York says it's only valued at $1.8 million and assessor's valuation at around 800 k How did he do this? Is he a real estate genius? No. The truth is he allowed an appraiser to overestimate the value of his property, and property is only worth what somebody is willing to pay. That is the real invisible hand of the free market. So this guy did something worse, worse than Donald Trump. But nobody seems to care because they want Jon Stewart on the air. They want him blasting and bad-mouthing your president. That's what they want. So 829% overestimated value. Will he go to jail? Absolutely not. Zero Hedge News has just released an interview with legal scholar Greg Germain and he completely hammered Judge Arthur Engeron's decision to fine Donald Trump $454 million. In reference to the appeals court decision to lower the fine, Greg Germain stated, I think the $175 million reduction shows that the appellate division has serious concerns about the validity of Judge Engeron's decision. Of course they do. This guy literally just made this up. There was no jury. There was evidence that Trump did not commit fraud. Nobody was defrauded. Nobody lost any money. Nobody was cheated payments or interest. Now, another legal scholar you may know the name of, Jonathan Turley, joined Germain in his critique by stating, I actually think they could have reduced this bond to virtually nothing because the amount set by Engeron was absurd. These are some of the most brilliant political minds in our country. And they're saying that this Arthur Engeron, this Trump hating radical left wing judge, just pulled this number out of his butt. He just went ahead and just made something up. Now, in case you missed it yesterday in my broadcast, Judge Arthur Engeron picked the fine amount because it was exactly the amount of cash that Donald Trump had liquid. So this Trump-hating judge literally tried to steal every single penny from Donald Trump, Melania Trump, and Barron Trump, and the Trump Corporation. This is disgusting. This is lawfare. This is Joe Biden giving permission to release the hounds, and he sicked them on the backside of Donald Trump. They literally invented... I mean, like, think about this. Like, imagine somebody finding out the balance of your 401k, and that becomes the amount of money that they try to settle with you for. That's what happened here. 
They literally right down to the penny. That's how they came up with this. This is the kind of stuff that happens in Venezuela. We are living in a banana republic. Now, in an effort to replace the money lost by his multi-hundred million dollar fines, Donald Trump is now promoting a $60 Bible with the goal to help America pray again. Trump argued that the nation is going haywire because religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. He stated our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now the foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. Now, you don't have to be a Christian, but the country was built on Judeo-Christian values. You can even be a, an atheist, and those Judeo-Christian values will bless you. Um, and so he's saying, listen, we need to get back to some of that old school thinking. Let me know in the comments, do you agree or disagree with this? Um, I personally live my life based off of Judeo-Christian values the best I can. I'm a terrible Christian. Uh, but I guess that's what makes every Christian a Christian, right? Is that uh, you're, you're terrible at it. But uh, let me know what you think. Is this, is this a good move? Is this a bad move? Now, uh, as you guys know, uh, <laughs> Rona McDaniels was hired by NBC News after being fired at the Republican National Committee, the RNC. And they threw such a fit that she's now been fired. Well, guess what? She's planning to sue them and will likely win because uh, they, they hired her a contract. She literally was given a job offer. Then they reneged on the offer. And so she's going to end up with $600,000 from NBC, all because those crybabies don't want somebody with conservative values on their network. I love how they pretend to be unbiased. They are so, so biased. It's wild. Okay, over on CNBC, Mad Money, uh, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink was interviewed. He shared insights suggesting that inflation rates might be higher than commonly anticipated. Uh, Godoy. I could have told you that, and I don't even work for the government. The United States government lied to us, and they lied saying that it, that inflation was only up 9%, 9%, when in reality, we know that it was closer to 30%. I mean, just look at the dollar store. The dollar store didn't go from $1 to $1.09. It went from $1 to $1.25, and in some cases, $1.50. So the government lied. And you know why they lied? This is the number one reason that they lied to the American people. Over 60 million Americans are on Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Those are the biggest liabilities of the United States government, more than military spending. Imagine if they had to give 60 million people a true livable retirement wage, give them back their money at an appropriate rate. Our, our already bankrupt government would have gone bankrupt overnight. This is why they lied to you. This is why they told you it was 9% and to get over it and suck it up because Americans are rich and we can deal with this. And oh yeah, we got to stick it to Vladimir Putin. These were all lies by Joe Biden and by Janet Yellen and the others. They lied to you. They lied to me because they don't have the money to take care of 60 million people that have paid into a system their entire life. They've stolen the social security money. This is why the Fed isn't audited. This is why social security isn't audited. This is why the military fails every audit. This is why the Pentagon fails every audit. These people steal our money and then they don't use it correctly. And then now they can't give it back. So they lied. They lied to you. They lied to you. 
Now, Fink has argued that if we were to use the original inflation standard of 1980, inflation would have been more than 12% per person. He stated, I still believe we're going to have higher inflation than most people believe. Dude, we don't not believe you. And much of that is going to help those people who are worried. If you add up food inflation, if you add up all the measures, the way you measured inflation back in the 80s, inflation was close to 12%. Again, I, I think it was much higher than 12%. I don't know. Let, let me know, please, over in the chat. Chat, I want to hear from you. Do you believe that inflation has been higher than 12%? Think about the gas bill. Think about... Think about your grocery bill. Just write yes if you think it was higher than 9%. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, exactly. My gosh. Stop lying to us, you piece of crap government. Oh, they use our tax money like it's their own personal ATM. Then you have people like AOC in New York saying... I can't live on $200,000 a year. You don't even have kids. Oh my gosh. I just, it, I'm sorry, you guys. I know it's late. Maybe my brain is not thinking correctly, uh, but it, it just, it makes me, in, it makes me crazy. Think about this. Think about this. Gas was like $1.79 under Trump. Then it went to over $4. I was paying $4.50 a gallon. Now it's come back to about 350. Well, guess what? That's still higher than 9%. 9% on $2 would be 18 cents. $2 and 18 cents. You guys, I'm not a mathematical genius. I can figure this stuff out. But the government, they can too, which is how we know that they lie to us. Oh, makes me crazy. All right, now listen to this. This lady, my gosh, she has got some, some uh, audacity. District Attorney Fannie Willis in Georgia has made two big announcements. First, she says nothing will derail the train coming for Donald Trump. She will get him jailed for life. She will strip him of his right to run for president. She says her case against Trump will not be derailed. Nothing can stop what is coming, according to her. Second, she plans to purposely ignore a request from a member of Congress to give information. That representative is Jim Jordan from Ohio. DA Fannie Willis said she has already shared enough information with the public and the court about her life and how she runs her department so she will be ignoring Representative Jim Jordan in Congress. Representative Jim Jordan says he will likely call on Congress to subpoena Fannie Willis and hold her in contempt if she skips. Why, why do they always use words like maybe or likely? Like have some freaking courage. This person is defying Congress. They are saying Oh, uh, nobody's above the law, not even former President Donald Trump. And then she behaves as if she is above the law. She literally, with her own two lips, said, I I'm not going to comply. I've already given away enough of my life and enough of how I run my department. Let's see. Grimclaw, are you going to go over the Trump merger that made him $5 billion? Uh, when it went public. I've already covered that, but basically uh, that, that is going to happen very soon. And uh, if everything goes through and it doesn't completely drop, then yes, he's about to stack billions and billions of dollars with that endeavor. All right. Now, why does Fannie Willis believe no one is above the law, but then places herself above the law? Is it pride? Is it ignorance? Is it just willfully disobeying the law? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, please. I, I want to hear from you. All right. Now, speaking of Donald Trump, the media is spreading new lies about him today. 
Today, the mainstream media said Donald Trump is harassing the daughter of the judge over his Stormy Daniel case brought by Alvin Braggs in upstate New York. Now, Donald Trump pointed out how the judge's daughter regularly posts about hating Donald Trump and posted a photo of Donald Trump behind bars in jail. Trump simply asked one question, how can I get a fair trial with a biased New York judge? Now, I think that that's a fair question. If they are prejudicing and biasing people against you, if the family of the judge is literally has Trump derangement syndrome, how on earth is he supposed to get a fair trial in New York? I don't think he can. Okay, the government might have to step in uh, like they are trying to, to lower the cost of diabetes medication. Uh, there is a new popular diabetes medicine named Ozempec. It is a hunger suppressing drug with many other uh, health benefits and very few side effects. It has just leaked that it costs around $5 a month for the drug maker to produce this drug, yet they charge about $1,000 a month. Now, most of this comes from big pharma taking advantage of the United States government and insurance providers, but they do this because they know nobody's going to fight them and so they're, they're literally just jacking up the prices to keep this medication from the general public. It, it, it's shameful. Okay, as time ticks on, more people are starting to believe that the cargo ship bridge disaster in Maryland was an intentional act. I've seen one theory suggest that the ship may have been hacked, which could explain why the, the ship purposely directed itself into the bridge footing. Uh, as the search for six missing people continues, investigators have seized the black box from the ship. While no talk of terrorist activity has come out from the FBI, I'll continue to keep you updated. But this ship was literally going, it loses power, and then all of a sudden it fires back up, turns itself, and rams right into the footing, which causes the entire bridge to collapse in less than two seconds. Some, something's not right. I'm not trying to push conspiracy theory. I'm just telling you what's in the news and what I saw with my own eyes. In Florida, the legal feud between Governor Ron DeSantis and Disney may be ending. Disney has finally conceded that they no longer have authority to claim autonomy in Florida after DeSantis removed their special status from them. After the, the decision was made, communications director Brian Griffin stated, Nor, no corporation should be its own government. Moving forward, we stand ready to work with Disney and the district to help promote economic growth, family-friendly tourism, and accountable government in Central Florida. I still find it crazy that Disney had this power to be their own city within government for all of these years. Ukraine Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleb is becoming increasingly frustrated with the lack of aid his country is receiving. According to state media, Kuleba commanded his allies to give us the damn patriots. It's becoming very clear that Ukraine believes they are entitled to our taxpayer money and our tax-funded weapons. But let me know what you think. I can't believe this war isn't over yet. They need to seek for peace. Uh, it, it's crazy that this war is still ongoing. Now, lastly, in Gaza, the U.S. government is once again failing to meaningfully help Palestinians, uh, civilians. Even after people died from parachutes malfunctioning, reports indicate that it happened again. In an apparent effort to avoid hitting people with falling objects, the aid was delivered into the ocean. Unfortunately, it now appears that roughly 12 people drowned trying to get access to this aid. This is also a huge humanitarian crisis. I know that the United States and other countries are doing their best to get aid in there, but it just seems like nothing seems to be going right. All right, now, some of you are just waking up. Others of you are ready to go to bed like myself. 
Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Before you go, I want to start your day off by reminding you that you are amazing. Thank you so much. I love you. Check out the videos that I put around here. And uh, thank you for supporting the channel. I'll see you on the next video.